Anyway, hello, it's me, I'm back. Anyway, I hit the spinner and it gave me the C color unisex one. And that looks a lot like this. Let me get it on this side since I've got more space on this side. Now, according to legend, this is supposed to be inspired by Laura Lee's cat's pajamas. I don't know for sure. It's not my problem. I just want to play. So, let me get my stuff out. Get my... Yes, I have rearranged again. Mainly because when the door is open, I need to be able to see where the 11-year-old has wandered off to. Help keep him out of trouble. And the door is this way. <laughs> and before my screen was pointed towards the door, sort of. It's like the back of it was towards the door and I couldn't see him. So now we've got it switched up. And my window with the bright sunlight at about this time of day, which is pretty much midday, is on this side. And then I've got a window way over there on the other side. And every time I move my arm, the camera decides to refocus. Anyway, put my white elf putty on here. And then pick up a bit more and go to next eye. How's everybody doing? I'm in week five of an eight-week class, which means that my finals will be coming up soon. I'm working on the first draft of my final project. Have to do it in outline form so the teacher can figure out if I've got my stuff consolidated before I do the final piece and turn it in and really screw up. Because you don't really have a lot of time to go back and fix when you've got an eight week course and the next one starts right on the heels of the last one. Uh, now all of my courses are eight weeks. I thought I got all this sleep smutch out of my eyes with the wash. Apparently some of it just wanted to hang in the eyelashes and not move. Sleep smutch. But yeah, I have seriously rearranged the desk and all of my stuff instead of my makeup and stuff being under the big desk it's all over here on the side and yeah it is what it is
Yes, I'm scooting up because this chair tends to kind of let me slide down some. And let me put my legs up, which kind of halts that slide. Now, I'm not nearly as close with the camera as I used to be. So what I'm going to do is probably learn how to do zoom in the edit. Because all the images are there. It's just trying to get to them. Now, let's see where we're going to start with this. Because I've got a couple different mats I can start with. Now, if you can tell, I've used this one a bit. It's got a little dusty bit up here in the top where I've been poking at it. So I may try this one. It's closer to a butterscotch. I don't know what I'm going to do. We already know I don't know what I'm going to do. Mostly. It's spinner pick. It's just grab the palette and see what happens. Now the one where I, the one I did recently where the intro was from another day with a different eye look that eye look was another spinner pick and again the spinner came up with a single it came up with a single from Estate and it was called Pipe and it was kind of this really really dark terracotta stone kind of reddish brown if you've ever seen Native American pipes and seen the ones with the bowl made from pipe stone? Yeah. That's pretty much the color. It's a lovely reddish brown. Nice deep color. I don't know what kind of stone it is, but... And then it gave me sea color jungle fever. Now, if you haven't seen sea color jungle fever, I suggest you at least look up images of it. It is bright. So, that's how I got that look. Oh, and now I've got my camera in front of my big screen. So I don't have to try and figure out whether or not I'm actually in picture. I do have a little trouble trying to remember to look at the camera directly rather than up at the screen. So yeah, that's going to be a little bit of a learning curve, but at least I can see without having to do this. Let's see, who's next? I think Shush. 
think I'm going to take that slightly lighter one next to the butterscotch and do a little of this. Yeah, this one's looking very brown so far. We'll see where it goes. I mean, this, this palette is browns and a couple of golds and a cream. There's a black down in one corner, and there's four sort of reds. There's a purple shimmer, a red-brown matte, a red-brown shimmer, and then a deeper purple shimmer. Kinda dull. <laughs> I'm hoping I can do something a little less dull with it. Like I said, I've got that matte black that I can use in the outside corner to give it a little oomph. Let's see, where am I going next? I'm going over here to scratch my big belly. Uh, I think I'm going to play with this red mat for just a second. Just kind of tap that in the corner a little bit to get some of the next color in. Because I think I'm going to go with the red shimmer for the center of the eye and then take one of the golds. Well, one of them is more of a bronze, and the other one's a pale gold. Go ahead and tap some of this black in there. In that corner, just a tad. Start deepening that up just a little. Now, I've been trying a couple of different things with these eyelids to try to do a decent looking liner. It's not like bleeding all over the place. Yeah. I've got so much fold in my eyes at this point, in the eyelids, that it's making it difficult to try even just taking a slightly angled brush and doing the, you know, tap on with a shadow. Mm. To try and do something that's got a bit of a wing to it. It's yeah, yeah, a bit of a wing. Not so much. Not with these droopies. Okay, let's see. Got this. I 
and that's not the right spritzy bottle. Where's my spritzy bottle? There's my spritzy bottle. Take, it's kind of a wine red shimmer. that over there so I can do this two-handed maneuver. It's one of my favorite sprayers. <laughs> it's got a nice wide fine mist so you don't overdo. And then I dried off the ferrule because you don't want this stuff getting down into the ferrule. Especially when you've put a bit of damp on it. You don't want it in the ferrule because it will start loosening up the glue that's holding the bristles. And once the bristles let go, all you've got is a fancy stick with a metal thing on it. So you don't want any wet stuff. That's why you don't leave your brushes soaked, too. You don't want any wet stuff getting in and eating the glue because then... your bristles are going to fall out. If you've ever seen the little pan, the little kind of a bucket looking thing with the spirals on the top that artists use to soak their brushes, the spiral is stiff enough that you can get just the tips of the bristles into the solvent if you're using, you know, like oil paints or whatever. Just the tips of the bristles to bust up oil paints are in the solvent. The whole brush is not submerged. You just want to get that little bit. Okay, reload. Spray. Patented drying method. I wish it was patented. Make me a book. Okay. Up here just a bit. And pull that into here. It's more of a pat than a drag. And believe me, this brush is really not wet. That fine mist does not soak the brush. Just kind of pat it in right where I want it. Drag some of this from over in the corner over so that it's got a transition that's starting to look pretty good what do you think
my eyes are looking a little better. Last few vids I did, they were really crinkly and kind of swollen looking. And it's called spring. It really is. It's called spring. It just... Mercy. Get that cleaned off. Yes, it's one of my little crocheted pieces this time. And then I'm going to work on that pale gold in the inner corner. See, I've got this one, which is kind of a bronze, and then there's this one. And I'm thinking this one in the inner corner. Hate itchy eyes. Yeah, I have spring and summer and fall and winter allergies. It doesn't matter what season it is, I've got an allergy to go with it. So, yeah, when they're not too awful, I don't, you know, it's like if I need a little something, I'll take a little something. In cases of it's spring and the pollen is starting to fly and the, the, the trees are starting to bud new leaves and I'm going, Ugh. and my eyes are like this and they're all puffy and swollen and ooky. And when I go to put makeup on the stinking things, Excuse me. The makeup is just dry enough that all of those puffed up places get all wrinkly and saggy and droopy and all you can see is lines. Not a good look. Now, my lighting appears to be a little better in this position. I don't have quite so many shadows on one side or the other. Now, that works really well when I have a sunny day, because then I just pop this window, knock the curtain back, And it works pretty nice. And then, on less sunny days, I have to fiddle with the room lights a little. The ring light that I had in the bounce box, if you've been here a while, you know about my homemade bounce box that I made with a elf box and some foam core. My ring light directly focused on me is just too bright. And I get washed out. Mm. I've got the ring light focused at an angle up and bouncing partly off the ceiling and partly off the wall. And I've got my desk lamp over here, which has a, an adjustable light feature where I can either go blue or yellow or, you know, just bright white. 
and I set it to match the ring light, which even though it's a cheapo, it's got the bluer and yellower and bright white kind of thing. The window over here with the sunlight coming through is not a yellow sunlight because we have a white frosted film on the window. This window looks directly into the kitchen window of our neighbor. I'm not into it. Okay. So we've got a frosted film over this window, which makes for a soft white light coming through there instead of the bright yellow from the sunlight. Now on cloudy days, I will have to figure something out. I keep forgetting Especially when I've got the whole palette of don't put it in front of everything. Tilt your head down if you have to, dum dum, so that people can see kind of what you're doing. I may eventually get it one of these days. may get another one of these desk lamps and stick it over on that side. I don't know. We'll have to see. There's not really a whole lot of place to put it over there. I've got a place I can kind of sort of put it, but only kind of sort of because there's a place to set it, but there's no plug nearby. And I'd have to run extensions and all that silliness. Okay, it's not one of my bright, bright, brights, but it's not bad. Let's see. Let me see. I've still got a little bit of the gold on this brush. I'm going to pick up some of this cream and just tap it in here and see if this does any good. Uh, I don't think so. Doesn't seem to be doing me a lot of favor. Pick up a little more of that gold and see if that helps. Not so much. It's a little brighter, but the inner corner really could use something a little brighter still. Yes, I'm doing it on this side anyway because I'm not going to wipe it off. So if I'm not going to wipe it off, it needs to be the same on both sides. So when I put something else in there, we're working with the same base. I don't know, we'll have to see how it goes. So, any, anybody doing anything interesting for the spring? I know the grands here are chomping at the bit because chocolate day is coming.
and it's like, guys, you guys get absolutely stupid when you're sucking down chocolate. Now, I'm going to take some of that butterscotch color. to mix it a little bit with everything else that's on the brush which is the golden cream and I'm going to come under the lower lashes just to put some color under those lower lashes I'm not really going to worry about smoking it out much because again it's one of those crinkly eye things not really such a big deal mm -hmm. anyway that's where we are I'm going to run away so you're not stuck listening to me come up with nothing to natter about currently and go finish up everything. I may even put my lashes on just for the heck of it. And it's like, I want you to notice something though. That's it. Two brushes. It's not a challenge. It's not a goal. It just... Sometimes it's the way it is. Two brushes. Yeah, I clean off my brush in between with little things like this. Yeah, a lot of people still like those color switch things. By the way, you can get the color switch things at Dollar Tree. No. Really. But I find, and several other people I've talked to have found, that those switch sponges tend to chew up your brushes, especially if you've got natural bristle brushes. Now, I don't fault people for using natural bristle brushes, the vegan and vegetarian thing. I love and do indulge on a regular basis in vegetarian only meals but I am an omnivore pretty much if I like the taste of it I won't eat it So, if you want to do a natural bristle brush, go for it. I consider natural bristle brushes as making the most use out of whatever creature the food you're eating has come from. You use everything that you possibly can. Leather for your shoes or outside clothes and scraping 
all that fine hair and some of it coarse hair off of the hide. Put it to use if you've got a way. But that's me. If I have offended any vegans or vegetarians, yeah. Now, I get it that you're offended, but not so much sorry. We all make our choices. At this point, in my tiny little YouTube career, if a few people drop off because of that, eh. It's hard to notice going up and down when you barely got 200 to begin with. I've got people subscribing to my channel, trying to sell me on hiring them to do management for my channel. And I'm like, I'm doing all right, right where I am. It's a little channel. I have a little group of people. I can talk to them. And that'll do. Because I love my little family. No, I haven't come up with a cute name for my little family. I'll think of something, all right? If somebody's got any bright ideas... Or if you just think I shouldn't bother to create a little groupy name for our little family, you can tell me. We're good. Anyhow, I'm going to get off of here and go finish my face. See you in a bit. Hello. I'm back. There we have it. And if you want somebody with a perfect eyeliner, this ain't the place. Look again. Anyway, this is it. Yes, it's kind of tame. But I think it looks pretty good. Kind of classy, kind of classic. Anyway, it's kind of hard for me to tell what it looks like unless I take the mirror and get right up on my face. Because remember, I normally wear glasses. I cannot see myself. But up close, I think it looks pretty good. I'll see what happens when I do the zoom. There's a slightly closer look without having to go to the regular zoom. We'll see how that looks when I go to edit. But see, this is what people see when I go out anywhere with this stuff on. Now, normally I would not be wearing eyelashes with my glasses because most of them are so long they bounce against the end the the inside of the lenses and make me crazy these that are from Cara Beauty that I picked up by way of shop miss a this is the number s3 and they're kind of short so they're not too bad All dep depends on how you place them. This one, I got a little closer in the corner than the other one. So this one, this right here, is kind of bounces bounces against the frame a little bit on the inner corner. But they're not uncomfortable behind the glasses. So, yeah, I'd wear them. Now, I've got some profusion contour here and there. I've got some profusion 
Luminizer 2 in a couple of spots. I've got Pacifica Cherry Blossom collection in a couple of spots. Now, this one is, this is one of my box pieces that I have loved getting. This is gorgeous. Let me get the light on there. This is absolutely gorgeous. It really is. I mean, you've got a really nice light bronzer for somebody like me who looks like cooked chick uncooked chicken. And then this really pretty, not really pink, not completely peachy kind of color in the blush and all natural stuff. Pacifica is wonderful. I love their formula. Like I said, I've got, these are my Cara Beauty lashes. And I used the pineapple coconut with horsetail plant extract style dry primer. This is the stuff that I've showed you that looks kind of milky, like a milky blob, but I can hold my hand like this and it just don't go nowhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh God, it smells good. If you don't mind scented stuff, this stuff smells delightful. Got my e.l.f. Serum Foundation. I don't like putting this one on on camera mainly because it's so runny I end up having to do the squirt onto the skin thing and it runs and I've never been a fan of that look <clears throat> and I've got my elf camo concealer I've gone through quite a lot of this which is act, takes a while to do the stuff is thick I've got believe it or not I've got on a lip liner which one is it is this the other one no that's the burgundy I'm looking for this one LA colors it says it's nude But, yeah, I've got a few L.A. Colors liners like that that are the retractable ones. And then the lippy is a bit that I got from one of the boxes. This one is from Bite. And it's got that really funky feeling case to it. And the color is called Glossé. The nice thing about using some of these less hyper color palettes is that then I have an excuse for using some of my less hyper color other stuff. Now I want to show you something. Th this here is where I put the contour. Hmm? That's where I put my contour. And you want to know why? There is this bizarre app they've got on TikTok. It's listed as a filter. And I saw Raw Beauty Christie do this. <coughs> and the thing puts lines on your on the image of your face. So you can see where they think your contour ought to be. 
they've got one that also does for your eyebrows. My problem is my eyes and my face. This side is so high compared to this side for whatever reason. I don't know, maybe I slept funny when I was an ink fink. But, yeah, it's like I've got a much lower thing going on here. But both of, you know, the, the lines that that thing gave me put, had me doing a much higher arch than I normally do. And the tail is much farther out than I normally do. So it's, it's like Christy said, it's kind of a fierce eyebrow as opposed to just a hanging around the house normal chick eyebrow. Yep, the Glossé does not pass the mug test. But it looks good, and oh god, it feels good. Bite lipsticks. Pricey, but they feel wonderful. And even though I've got some on the mug, Little Pig is a restaurant here in in Baker. It's a barbecue joint. No, they're not sponsoring me either. But what they do every so often is with these mugs. They bake a, not a muffin, a cookie in the mugs. So you're buying the mug and the cookie and it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. And don't worry, that's just caught. Well, coffee with a addition of something called Creo. Creo, not sponsored. I wish I was. Creo is an absolutely delightful thing. They take coffee roasting techniques and apply it to chocolate. So they take the chocolate nibs out of the pods, they dry them, they roast them, and literally it really is coffee techniques because they roast them in coffee styles. I mean, you know, Ghana, dark roast, light roast, yeah, da, 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 da. And then they grind it up so that you can brew it like coffee. They, you know, if you're just getting started with it, you can get their beginner pack, which has got two different roasts and a French press. Now, unlike coffee, you have to let the um, Creo set for about six to ten minutes. At, you know, whereas with the coffee, you usually press within a minute or two of pouring the hot water over. But, oh my God, it's wonderful. And they have, have holiday specials where they put some caramel in or peppermint and more chocolate it's like you know peppermint mocha kind of thing and it's 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 delightful it really is it's delightful and we mix it with our coffee we drink it on its own it's just it's lovely I like it we don't get it often it's you know it's like 14 15 bucks a, a bag and but it oh, as a treat it's worth it worth it now while i was doing this and i had the the 
um, Luminizer 2 from Profusion out. I put a gold highlight along the cheeks and up around in here and around the eyelash, eyebrow and then I took the pink luminizer. It's called Aura. And I did the inner corner. And that was my grandson opening the door even though the sign is up that says Granny is filming. Anyway, that's it. Tell me what you think. What do you think? Bye.